video I am going to discuss uh, some of the questions that has been asked uh, PhD interview 2020 so these are the latest question I have got from my fellow friends so this question has been asked at IMSC and JNCSR so I will uh, discuss the question and some of the answer as well so uh, there are some predicted questions that uh, I have also given in my last series of PhD interviews how to how to cover the different kind of topics so I think you will uh, enjoy this video this will be helpful for upcoming further interviews as well so please watch till the end and without wasting much time let's just jump into the main video hello guys welcome to my channel physics in my way so today I'm going to discuss or share with you some interview questions that has been asked at IMSC and JNC sir uh, for the PhD 2020 so yeah these are the questions I have uh, got from my fellow friends so thank you guys for sharing this question with me so obviously these are the real interview experience from my fellow friends so so are these these questions are not from my mind but these are the real interview questions so you will have some idea if you have uh, in some interviews uh, left for other institutions you will have uh, estimation idea of how the uh, online interview is going in 2020 for the PhD. So the mainly topics that they have asked in IMSC uh, was so quantum mechanics was there, nuclear physics, thermodynamics questions was there, and uh, math methods question also there. Then uh, statistical mechanics and then special theory of relativity. So talking about the interview question, so. Candidate 1, he has given his interview. So he has been asked that a particle is projected to a nucleus and it is absorbed by the nucleus. Then ex they wanted you to explain whether the potential is real or imaginary. So think about that. I will uh, uh, discuss very few questions among those. Then the second question was, uh, let's say if you have a matrix A and B and if A square equal to B square equal to 1 and trace of A, trace of B equal to 0, then uh, what can you comment on the eigenvalues of these two matrices? Then the next question was uh, for a free expansion of real gas, how the temperature will change for adiabatic system and second case when this system is kept in a temperature bath. So they have asked to comment on that. Then uh, another question was uh, uh, there was a circuit that has three parts and in each part one register is connected. And the probability of flowing current to each register is given P. Then they have uh, asked then, uh, what is the probability of total current in the ammeter. And also they have asked to calculate uh, if there is no current flow. So what is the probability of no current flowing through the circuit. So as far as I remember this question was also asked in some of the uh, previous year question of uh, net CSR. Uh, uh, maybe some uh, one years back you can check that. Then uh, some uh, concept about four vectors or you are not specific what are those questions but uh, you need to study four vectors as well if you are interested in a uh, special theory of relativity. Then a uh, question was given a finite and infinite potential where is given then uh, uh, the candidate was asked to draw the ground state wave functions and scattering state and energy eigenvalue for finite and the infinite potential and also they have asked to write the Schrodinger equation uh, for each cases. Okay, so these are the questions. So then the next question was Lorentz transformation. They have asked few questions. So they have given two equations. Have then uh, they asked among those which obeys the Lorentz transformation, and uh, yeah, you need to explain with logic. So forget the specific equa equation, but uh, so you need to know about the uh, Lorentz transformation. Then they have asked Minkowski space-time diagram, and uh, they have asked to explain the diagram. What do you understand from the diagram? Okay, so then uh, next question was for special theory of relativity. Actually, he has chosen the topic of special theory of relativity. That is why they ask so many questions from special theory of relativity. So the next question was uh, invariant quantities in special theory of relativity or STR and a concept about a flat space and curved space. And the next question was uh, from the statistical mechanics. Uh, it is a common question as you can see. So they have asked to plot Fermi Dirac distribution. Bose Einstein distribution and Maxwell uh, Boltzmann distribution on the same plot. So, as you can see here, the plots this for Fermi Dirac, Maxwell Boltzmann, and Bose Einstein. 
Okay, so you need to know the distribution function as well. Then the box, if you replace e minus mu by 1, so you need to replace this e minus mu by 1 for each case, and 1 by kBt is equal to beta, then the box, how this graph will vary with uh, temperature. Okay, then the next question was uh, there are n lattice sites and each has half spin. Then have asked to calculate the S. And if one spin is flipped, then they have asked to calculate the change in S. So actually, this problem uh, can be solved using mean field theory to my knowledge. So you need to know mean field theory as well to solve this kind of problem. Then the next question was also from matrix. Uh, this has been asked to another candidate. So A and B are two matrices, N cross N matrices have been given and uh, mod of S, um, A square equal to B square equal to 1 then uh, AB commutation equal to 2 IC and AB and D commutation is 0 then they have asked to find trace of A, trace of B and the dimension of ABC if you work out this problem it is not much difficult then they have asked to <coughs> draw ground state uh, wave function for the following cases like here so 0 TL particle in a box then uh, for a finite negative potential and uh, some potential which is step like and the left side is infinite so you need to know how to plot if a potential is given in different kind of regions so region of here, here and here okay now uh, going to the question that has been asked at JNCSR so the very first question to one of my fellow friends was they have asked to distinguish between semiconductor metal and insulator experimentally so this answer will be obviously by measuring rho as a function of temperature you can obviously get uh, them distinguished. Then they have asked to draw a band diagram of semiconductor and denote Fermi level of intrinsic semiconductor. So you know that Fermi level is at the middle of the uh, balance band and the conduction band maxima and minima. Then a uh, definition of a uh, Fermi level at the 0k and uh, why isn't the Fermi level occupied for a semiconductor. Okay. Then the next question was uh, they have asked to draw BCC lattice and uh, denote primitive cell. So this is a primitive cell for FCC. So you need to know BCC, FCC and uh, simple cubic. So here are the uh, primitive cell for BCC. So you need to keep in mind that primitive cell is nothing but where the number of atoms per unit cell must be 1. So in keeping on that information in your mind you need to imagine that cell. Better to prepare this kind of question for basic solid state physics interview. Then uh, the next question was they have asked to plot x square sine of x. So yeah this plot is really uh, easy. The, then the next question was uh, to plot uh, x square sine x. First you only need to know that uh, obviously this is a odd function. So f of x here if you put it will be minus of fx right. So in both sides of the graph, it will be anti-symmetric. So the graph will look like this. So amplitude it vary as x square, but you need to also keep on mind that it is a anti-symmetric. This is an odd function. Okay. So if this is the right hand side of the graph, okay. So amplitude will uh, increase. Then the left hand side will start from here. Okay. So this is your x square sin x square. Then uh, the next question was uh, write a diode equation and they have asked to plot it. And the next question was a uh, nanomagnetism. So it is a very interesting question. I have also uh, discussed this in one of my uh, videos. So they have asked if we cut the size of a ferromagnetic particle so that uh, uh, so that uh, it has uh, only single domain. And then you draw the BH curve. And this is a special case of a super paramagnetism, obviously. So, super paramagnetism is a form of magnetism. So, let me discuss this in briefly, uh, which appears in small ferromagnetic or ferromagnetic nanoparticles. So, if you uh, cut down the ferromagnetic material to nano dimension or nano size or ferromagnetic material, then it will exhibit super paramagnetism. So, um, I will discuss further what is super paramagnetism, what are the properties. So in uh, sufficiently small nanoparticles, magnetization can randomly flip just under the influence of temperature. And uh, ferromagnetism obviously disappears and transfer to super paramagnetism in the nanometer scale due to huge surface energy. So as you uh, reduce the to nanodimension, its uh, surface to volume ratio will increase. 
So this phenomena happens uh, around 5 to 50 nanometer depending on the material. So this is the graph. So for uh, paramagnetism, uh, so the paramagnetism graph is here. This is a M versus magnetic M versus H graph. For B versus H, this saturation will slightly increase. That, that means for MH curve, this will saturate, but for BH curve, it will slightly increase as B will increase in increase in H. Okay. So this is the curve for a BH or MH, though little bit difference is there. So there will be no hysteresis or no loop for super paramagnetism. So there is no hysteresis, and as you can see, the coercivity here is also zero. Then uh, zero residual magnetization after an external field is low. As you can see, if the external field is zero, then magnetization is also zero. And uh, this property assists in avoiding coagulation, which consequently lowers the possibility of agglomeration in uh, vivo compared with other magnetic nanoparticles. So if you want a reference, I would uh, refer such as BD quality for a, a magnetic materials. You can search on libgen.is, you will get the book definitely. So one more important uh, point I should mention here. Thus, uh, this is the curve for uh, paramagnetic. So in paramagnetic, this slope compared to this slope is less. So that means the susceptibility of paramagnetic particle is less than the susceptibility of the uh, super paramagnetic particle. Okay. So super paramagneticism is a special case of paramagnetism, but the susceptibility is much, much higher. So actually this particle is uh, used in to treat cancer cells if you have tumor cell or cancer cell in your body, this particle will be injected and this particle will flow that part and if you apply external magnetic field, then this particle will uh, flip. So it will easily flip this way and field is opposite, then it will also flip this way. So it will randomly vibrate and it, it will uh, create a uh, certain amount of heat to destroy the tumor cell or cancer cell. So, so this is a very much important topic uh, if you are going to do research in nanoscience or if you are interested in magnetism you should uh, start this topic also this question has been asked i was suggested previously in one of my videos so then next question was how can we detect a nanoparticles if you do not have any spectroscopic system so the answer is uh, simple so if you have extra diffraction technique we can use uh, there will have a very broad peak because of the crystallized size is small for nanoparticle and less number of planes are available and volume of the lattice is small so x-ray will interact less so peak will be broad and of low intensity so if you know the device error formula where I, is beta equal to beta is a broadening some k into lambda by l of cos theta okay so is l your crystallized site crystallized site means how many number of atoms are present in a perfect orientation so let's say this kind of uh, this kind of atoms are arranged in this plane though I will say that this is a crystalline and this in this domain if these atoms are arranged in this kind of planes so this is a defined crystalline okay so this will give a crystalline this will also give a crystalline so for nanoparticle this crystallized side is very small so your L is small then your beta your peak broadening will also be large and here also less number of planes are available to interact with the X-ray so X-ray will fall, it will create diffraction pattern, but it will not multiply because less number of planes are available. So that's why intensity will be less and broad. So I am going to show some intensity. So this is a uh, plot for a polycrystalline bulk sample and this is a plot for amorphous. As you can see for amorphous there is a hump like structure and the intensity is very less. This is a I versus 2 theta plot and for nanoparticles, so this is the uh, this is for nanoparticle. Let me remove these things. So for nanoparticle, as you can see, this peak is uh, broad and intensity is uh, quite uh, much as compared to amorphous. And this is also another example of nanoparticle where uh, defined domains are available, not a single domain, many more domains are available. Okay. So this is how the nanoparticle extra diffraction will uh, look like. Then the another question was, what is uh, what feature can you get from a normal extra peak? And uh, what does the FWHO of the peak corresponds to? So FW, if you have a X-ray pattern, uh, let's say I have a peak like this and this, let's say two peaks, then FWHM is the full width half maximum. Let's say if this is your intensity, if this is your total intensity, then half of the intensity will be like here, then your full width half maximum will be projection on the X-axis on 2 theta. 
So AFWHM will be 2 theta and this is intensity. So this AFWHM will give you the crystallite size. So your broadening is uh, somewhat k into lambda by L cos theta as I have mentioned. So this beta is your AFWHM. And if you know lambda that is a wavelength of x and k is the cellar constant, then you can easily calculate that crystallite size L. Okay. So obviously there are some more broadening, instrumental broadening and strain broadening. You need to subset those things, then you will actually get your beta for FWHM. Okay, so your FWHM will uh, give minimal important, uh, important information. And if your FWHM is order of 0 0.08, then you can say it is a it has good crystallinity that means there are very uh, long order periodicity in the lattice let's say this is a crystal and all the planes are parallel and it has a large number of planes then i will say this is a, a good crystal or the crystallinity is really good okay let me remove all these things uh, so study these things are from bd quality standard book or uh, c suryanar and extra diffraction technique i have also given the link in uh, one of my previous videos so the next question was a phase space trajectory for the following cases like a simple pendulum and the pendulum is a drift in the water and if the pendulum bob is a hollow sphere and filled with half of the water and then it will made to oscillation so it will be made so it will made to oscillation so i also discussed phase space trajectory how to draw from uh, some uh, different kind of potential that will be a very important topic so yeah i'm taking long time to upload that video but i will upload very soon then the next question was a lithography technique as the student uh, done is a uh, project in uh, and I am in lithography that's why they have uh, done lithography. So lithography is uh, nothing but just creating a rubber stamp or nano material. If you look at the stamp you know that there are some texture created but if this texture are created on the nano material say 20 nanometer 100 nanometer then that will be called lithography. So in lithography technique, different types of techniques are there, ion beam lithography, UV lithography and electron lithography and X-ray lithography is also there but uh, X-ray lithography is uh, still uh, to come in the practical field. So I will also, um, uh, uh, also be making an important video relating to lithography if you want to learn that technique. So I can uh, share with you this thing and I will update the uh, link of the video in the description area of this video. So that's for it today. Many more important questions for 2020 interview and gathering all those questions. I will very soon upload them one by one. So stay tuned with, with my channel. And, and if you are new to my channel, then don't forget to subscribe and uh, turn the notification bell icon and press all so that every time I important more this kind of videos in future, you will be notified first and you will not miss. So that's for it today. I will uh, meet very soon with other important video regarding obviously PSD interview question 2020 and also question for phase based trajectory till then bye bye stay safe and give your interviews well so I am I will always be there to share all those questions with you that's for it today